for the Foundation for Human Rights and Democracy for over eight years. I was um, excited to work with the CSO members that were working on 26 issues that supposed to be presented to the United Nations Human Rights Committee. In the wake of a functioning system of any democratic country, the participation of every institution is key. Civil society representation, members from the government, other institutions, responsibility of accountability, and underlining assumptions that have been made through the corridors of our country, that Liberia is just void of problems and not ready to settle issues when it comes to having stability in the country, the issue of corruption, the issue of non-discrimination, gender equality, the issue of gender-based violence, the issue of female genital mutilation, and so many others. I was excited again to be part of the delegation at the 123rd session of the United Nations Commission Committee at um, the headquarters of UN in Geneva, Switzerland. And participating in that forum was, was very much overwhelmed. There were formal and informal sections we went uh, and met with the city council, and the city council was very interested in knowing key issues that Liberia face, as those of what were mentioned in the shadow report of the CSO, and ways through which international partners can come to Liberia and aid in the process of making sure that those issues that we see as problems as a form of having our country stabilized was also part of what was presented to the body of the UN. Reverend Colley has said so much and I was given just eight minutes to speak to you. So during my presentation I will explain a lot to you but I think that uh, this report should not be taken lightly as we sit at our tables and listen to various presentations that will be made today, we don't want that document to be gone home and set aside. What does we play on it? We need to read it, comprehend, and make sure that issues that have been mentioned, because that, that there's going to be follow-up. Government was given two years, and government is not all by herself even civil society and other institutions that work in collaboration and making sure that human rights issues or human rights violations amended comes with a coordination. So we want to see how best we can work together and have a functioning system that our country tomorrow will be lifted. Thank you. We took advantage of the opportunity as civil society one of the things that I want to register here is that uh, the idea of accepting, of accepting to write a report for a country did not just come by just a mad individual uh, uh, consent, but it came as a national calling. And that is. We say we are human rights group in civil society. What can we show as a society that have worked since the foundation of Liberia on human rights? All of our work done and remaining within the borders of this country sometimes is not just sufficient. Why? Because human rights, while we know within our constitution, is also a right that has to do with uh, protection of citizens, but it also has a great international and uh, international regional intervention. So in order to help address the human rights issue as a state, 
you must also have the international support, international commitment to help you improve the situation on the ground. And the idea of human rights is not to be subjected, but it should be a process by which everyone can be able to enjoy the basic services that are accorded for citizens and a nation. So we thought that working on children, women, and all other interest groups, those works should not just be compromised in the country context, but it should also be able to uh, reach the five international bodies that coordinate human rights, that supervise human rights globally. So when we decided to, to, to do the report on Liberia, we went the extra mile. That is, we discipline ourselves. We had to go through an extraordinary school of thoughts because you don't want to write a whole book that is empty. Because in human rights reporting, you got to be mindful of reporting and storytelling. Without storytelling or writing a story, rather than reporting. The two things we look for. When you are writing a report, you got to write a report to cite the issues. But when you are writing a story, it will just go on. So we are saying that we move from writing a story to writing a report, a country report. So we wrote a country report that the outcome has come today. So that alone has elevated us, civil society, and human rights community to a more uh, better position. So when the UN did receive our report, I mean, they used it as a source of information to even engage the government more stronger. So the government delegation will tell you that, hey, what you guys wrote, really, really, you guys wrote a good report. I remember the Solicitor General of Liberia, the Republic of Liberia, met me and in fact congratulated us for the report that we submitted to the UN. And while we're in Geneva, the head of delegation, the deputy minister for administration, did again commend the civil society for the report and our participation. So you see the level of collaboration and the strong engagement. So in fact, it has brought us to the table now that we and government can sit down to see how Liberia is proceeding. So this report that we are about to discuss, I mean, it has, I mean, it's going to serve as a, as a, as a door opener on all other issues. We got other conventions that we need to write a report about. That is Convention on Pressing with Disability, Convention Against Torture, Convention on Economic Social Cultural Rights, Convention on the Rights of the Child, and then conventions on women, they sit down. So there are a lot of different reports that we're going to be writing. This report is the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. But the uniqueness of this identical covenant, it captures almost everything within the human you know, existence. So that's why you got more, more interest built around the identical report. So to tell you that uh, we were able to pull up something that is being used as a tool by the United Nations to to, 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 to direct how our government address our human rights obligation is a plus for civil society. So again, it is not just the travel, but it's about the impact. It is about the way you build your case. So we wrote a report, and then we had to go to build a case that those things are captured in the report, they are considered by the UN. And graciously, the committee did consider all the issues we presented. That is 26 list of issues. They have pent, pent pointed on all of those issues that we're going to be discussing in the two days. So, I mean, experience-wise, as a human rights person, beyond this border, your respect is up to the sky. Human rights person, beyond this border, when you are called a human rights defender, your seats are just, you know, placed very well. Human rights defender, beyond this border of Liberia, when you are out there, you are an expert. Beyond this border as a human rights defender, when you are out there at the UN, you are seen as a diplomat. So we just want to let you guys know that uh, experience-wise, uh, other way of engagement, you got to be much more 
just confident of yourself. Master your issue, know it, know how to communicate. Of course, your issue will be considered. And three, it provides an opportunity to strengthen cooperation within government. So, what we realize over time is that the whole process of treaty reporting provides an opportunity to strengthen cooperation within government. And it's important because sometimes different government in institutions or agencies are working on different human rights institutions, you know, different human rights activities, but we're not going in one direction. And so that has an uh, impact on the outcome, the impact, the overall impact or effect that the small, small splinter activities are going on. Four, it provides an opportunity to strengthen cooperation with civil society on specific human rights issues. So I think you see the coordination right here. Treaty reporting has brought us to the table. You have our, we have recommendations on the Human Rights Committee, and we as government will have similar recommendations. So while we're implementing, your role will be there. Your role there is to follow up on our implementation and see whether we're on track of implementation. And where we are falling short, you will also highlight and discuss with us constructively. So then we want to know what is in it for us. The first thing I, I usually tell those of us in government and those of us in civil society, the importance of human rights, of reporting, is not to satisfy international partners' demand. That should not be the case. The, 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 the reason we implement human rights treaties and conventions is so that we improve the human rights condition on the ground. We improve the rights of our citizens and respect the rights of other residents in our country. So, um, when you report, reporting provides an opportunity to receive international expert advice on improving the human rights situation. Um, Liberia, in, in a past report, like the UPRO, we receive recommendations to allow uh, international experts to come to the country to study human rights situation at a thematic level and provide the expert uh, advice we're talking about. And in that arrangement, we had uh, we extended our standing invitation, meaning that uh, special procedures of the UN can pay basic to Liberia to study different human rights issues and provide recommendations and advice to the government. And under that regime, we just had David K. Those of you in the information area, he is the, the, the rapporteur on freedom of speech and opinion. He was here quite recently. He did an assessment about freedom of speech of the press in Liberia, and he made recommendations to the government. He even uh, applauded the government for the good work because we have a very good uh, of record for freedom of, of the press. Then it also improves the international profile of the state party. So if Liberia fulfills all international treaty reporting obligations, it will be on record at the level of the UN. All 93 member states of the UN, it will be on record that Liberia is doing well. Sometimes when we listen to or when we follow some of those international world index or indexes, they tell Liberia rank fourth, poorest in the world. That we are ranked fourth in place, uh, fifth in place, this and that, prison overcrowding. So, as we improve those areas, that we can rank up, up until we reach to a, play, to a point where we are at a position to be <laughs> applauded rather than to be condemned as at that level. Then I want to take us back to, for example, you also can get financial support. Right now, the Millennium Challenge Corporation. <coughs> The, before they gave that bill of 257 million, 257 million, based on good governance, good policies, the implementation of human rights best practices. And we are still on that discussion as we speak. And so we are at the, at the table now discussing how can we put mechanism in place to ensure that we deal with other issues like tracing, overcrowding, access to justice and other areas under the Ministry of Justice and the Judiciary. It encourages a more effective system of aid, technical support, and global justice. For example, 
if Latvia ratifies some of those international instruments that they are asking us to ratify, then quite recently we had the AU here, the African court, and they were asking that they to ratify. I, I, I'm, I'm very sure that the president told them uh, that we were going to consider it favorably. But if we sign up, if we ratify, it means that if we get, there is an issue here that we cannot handle and we have used all our local remedies, it means that we can go one step to the African court and they will come in. I know of a case in Guinea where a librarian was placed in jail and he died in jail because of some actions against him. And an international organization took the case to the Af either the African court or ECOWAS court. And the court ruled against Guinea. And Guinea had to pay uh, restitution to the men's family. So it provides a, a platform for justice, for global justice. We noted now, having laid the, 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 the background of where we are with or, or, or what is the importance of duty reporting and ratification, we as a state we noted the issue of the backlog of reports due treaty bodies by the government of Liberia. So there are nine core treaty bodies, or there are nine core treaty that Liberia should be reporting to as of date. Lagro has reported under the CRC, that is the Convention on the Rights of the Child. Lagro has reported under the CEDAW, that is the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. Lagro has reported, no. Now we have, we have completed our first report under the the ICCPRO, that is the Civil and Political Rights, which we are discussing currently. Lagro has also drafted our first report under the rest of the persons with disability, that is CRPD, we have drafted. It is in completing stage. We have not finalized the report. We have not submitted it. So we talk about C CRC, CDOR, we talk about ICCPR. Those three are complete. Um, like the CRPD, if we submit it, it will be full. We also look into drafting the first report to the Convention Against Torture. So it will be five. So we still got outstanding we still got outstanding four. But even the outstanding four, you can include the two that we haven't sent yet. You understand? Fine. So we agree that we have backlog of reports dating back as far as 11 years. Some of them will be like, because they took um, the CRPD, but just by the 5, 2012. Some of you m will know, and some are not aware, that we have two laws in Liberia. The customary law is still a legal document. It's still a legal document. There are powers given to our chief and elders that are not taken from them by the statutory laws. They are charged to investigate and bring punitive measure against people in their jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. Why the, sta the statutory law cover the Republic of Liberia? So how does that work? There are there are crimes described in our customary law that should be exclusively responsibility of chief and elders to handle. Why our law say all oh, violation should go through our jurisprudence. So that's a contradiction. That is why if you go into our traditional setting, sometimes the, the, the chief silence you because they have laws that gave them that power to silence you. But there is a need for us to check in as much as we want to give them power to make sure that the rule of law is the order of the day throughout the left and breadth of our country. What do we mean by that? Our law says the police or are the law enforcement personnel that are responsible for all violation, crimes, and abuses. Even if you commit a crime, if an if a air personnel or fire service personnel is on the scene, they are state security, they are under obligation to arrest the situation and tell what to who? At the civil society uh, of practitioner, if you find disorderly behavior in a particular environment, you can intervene peacefully until the police come, but you are not responsible to judge or decide who wrong in that matter. Yeah. Are we there? Yeah. Because we see sometimes situations occur. I gave you an example of Bapolu County when I was with the Omeo at the time. A situation occurred in a village that had to do with rape. 
Somebody accused the boy of raping the girl, and so they took the girl forcefully to the Sunday bush. So that two incidents occur right there, right? Yeah. Two violations. One, the issue of rape. Two, the issue of forceful initiation. That two, right? Yeah. Fine. Now, the family of the girl committed themselves because the elders say the girl must go to the bush. The both family are saying that you accuse us of raping your daughter. We, we are saying the girl is of age and she is our, our son wife. So produce the girl. The law come in, the law say produce the girl before we can even get into the case. Right? The both party must be before the law. Confession broke up. Police went from the scene, fighting open. Police came by and arrested all those involved in the fighting and took those involved to the police station. What is the role of the police in that case? Was to investigate, come, uh, create the charge, and take them to court, right? Yeah. The, the chief and elders appeared to, to the, 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 the police station and demanded the case. That this case is our village case. We have our elders and chief. They should, should handle this case. Police are afraid because they threatened that they're going to bring the devil and allow everybody to go back. They went back, the case got worse. Two towns broke up, burning, people died. The situation now, they have confusion for us. People hating each other, they tend to people dying. Reinforcement had to come from Morovia, arrested everybody, chief and elder, everybody carried them to a police station, quickly processed them, sent them to court. The case in court, the devil arrived at the court and demanded to take the case back to the village. They had to get it. Internal affairs involved. They had to get everybody involved that the devil should step out of the case. Because the customary law provides that the people should handle these cases. Are we somewhere? So the situation there becomes complicated. Who do you take to court when there is a law saying that these chief and elders are responsible to handle cases also? So if you go to court, you become stuck in the middle of the court. Are we there? Yeah. Then you go now to appeal. You go to start appealing. Have you seen us appealing to our chief and elders? Yeah. We appeal to them, oh, we beg you all, let's break all that, get all of their case here. Somebody finish dying. Well, then we go to negotiate. What am I saying? So this particular portion is telling us that there is a need to revisit our laws. There is a need to harmonize our laws. There is a need that our legal system should be one. We can have a dual legal system. So as we advocate it, we should also advocate that there is a need to speed up the issue of reconciling our laws. Right now, the Carter Center is leading that, that initiative, but it has been almost four years since we've been meeting. Every day we go to Carter Center, we sit around the table, we review the documents, we send it back to, to, to uh, the, 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 the Internal Affairs Ministry. Internal Affairs Ministry review it, send it back to Temple of Justice. There is a need for a loud advocacy to review our laws. Because this is why boundary allocation is causing problem too. Because this chief will come and say, from this place to this place is my territory. And you dare not go discuss it. Why are you going to discuss it? It's not cold matter. Because there is no law on the book that prohibits them from getting into legal issues. So this is the foundation for this aspect of, 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 of our law. We even go, we found out that we, we, we have in our law dual citizenship is not allowed. We have in our law a major violation we have to do with the color of the skin. We cannot be talking ICCPR that talks about equal opportunity, equal access. Then you say one color is denied your citizenship. Yeah. Just to think about the color of the skin mentioned in your constitution, that is a major violation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there might be justification that in the days, this color had more money than the other color, this color has slavery than the other color. Well, that for the days. Let's mm -hmm. talk about now. Should the color of a man's skin decide which country he becomes citizen of? Somebody said no, because there are some people who are more white than the color white, who were born here, grew here, got family here, and then you deny them your citizenship because of the color of the skin. Not what they're doing, not the character. Are we somewhere?
This is the basis for this part of our constitution, of our, of our, of our recommendation. They are saying that your laws should confine to the standards of human rights. And this is something that, that I didn't say in the beginning because the OACHR, which is the, the, the UN Human Rights Arm, set standard for protection of human rights. How do we know that a country is protecting human rights? There is a standard that is set. There is a bar that you should reach this line before we know you are protecting human rights. And mind you, that standard is not equally shared. Why is it not equally shared? Because we have different cultures, we have different traditions, we have different economy. But some people say, oh, the people want all the live like them. No. The same people who are making the laws are you and I, our nations, our leaders sit around the table and look at it. If they say that, for example, child rights, somebody say the people in Europe and Asia, their children are out of control. So we can't protect child right here because African children, they are different. But you want to go and live in Europe, in Europe. You want to go and live in America where the children have no control, but you want to go live there. They, and your children should go there. By the time they go past you, what's that? Now, now, I don't know if anybody will stay in the room yet. You will be surprised that the person who sent that person to do that thing, if you kill that person, you don't do that person, that person standing right near you, tell you to kill that man. Because he doesn't want that man to be able to, to expose him. These are some of the reasons why they say extract death penalty from in your law. Because sometimes they will pay the people and say, well, close your mouth for me. That person take the money and close him up. After five years in jail, he said, no, I got something to talk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Am, I, am I being true here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you kill that person, you can't get it. that person that initiated that situation will re initiate that situation again. Mm -hmm. Find another person to, to, to do it, right? Mm -hmm. So this is why they are saying, if we say we are, we are making reports on our ICCPR, the International Convention on Civil Political Rights, we should make sure that our laws are in line with those standards that are set in the ICCPR. Right? One of them will say the right to life. How can you have the right to life? The first thing is that nobody should take your life. Let's erase death penalty. No human being should take his friend's life. Then say, why if you take somebody's life? Yes, when you take somebody's life, they, we have lifetime imprisonment. It is more helpful to stay in jail for the rest of your life than to die. When you die in peace. Mm -hmm. But you be lazy, you be in one corner. Some of you never go in jail before and let them lock your room on you. For five years, you're in one room. It's more than dying. So that is why some of the principals say, let's go and visit our laws to ensure that our laws confine to what? The international standard prevails. Somebody said international standard, international standard. We are the international standard. It's you and I. It's nobody else. It's not the color of the skin. Because when our people are making these laws, and let me try to leave my, 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 my UN shell and be a more Liberian. Sometimes when people are making the law, our Africans go and sign only because they want the aftermath. Yes. Some of these documents, sorry to say they are. 100, cap, 100 page document, 50 page document, they just signed the last page. <laughs>